Rumi Rhodes from the Takash Quartet. We're super excited about playing for all of you again, for returning to Philly and um, returning to the PCMF stage. Uh, this will actually be our first East Coast live concert since March of last year and our PCMS debut with our new violist, Richard O'Neill, who joined us in June of last year. One of the featured pieces on this program is Henri de Thieu's Ainsi la Nuit, or Thus the Night. The title of the piece doesn't actually refer to a specific storyline or it doesn't depict a poem or any s specific imagery, but it definitely conjures up a lot of possibilities for the imagination in terms of what night music could possibly be. Um, it can be mysterious and magical and mystical and full of fairy dust. Um, it can be also terrifying and full of suspense, unbearable suspense. Um, it can be frantic and, and full of panic. Um, or it can be very calming. Um, the stillness of the night can be comforting almost, static and at times very peaceful. I think uh, we've all gotten the habit of categorizing different types of music in neatly packaged spaces, um, like classical and romantic and modern and contemporary and impressionistic and so on and so forth. Um, for me, this piece doesn't really fit into any of those categories in, in a good way. Um, it just doesn't progress in the same kind of um, linear narrative that a lot of music gives us. Um, and I think on a human level, uh, I really relate to that concept. And I love that about this piece. Um, and I've grown very attached to it in its sort of hauntingly beautiful ways. Um, we're really excited to share this music with you and we hope you enjoy it. Richard. Richard is so great. Uh, Richard and I met over 20 years ago. Um, actually, uh, we first met uh, as students playing Henri Dittier's string quartet. So this is all full, full circle. It's uh, extremely fitting that, um, that we play this piece for you today in our um, uh, new configuration with our Takash quartet mates. Um, for this special occasion with PCMS. Um, yeah, I mean, Richard's presence overall, everything about his presence, his sound, his curiosity, his amazing combination of power and flexibility, um, his expertise, his experience, his humanity, everything about his presence, um, affects the overall chemistry of the quartet. Um, and uh, it so positively makes all of us feel um, free, free to, to express ourselves, free to, to, to talk in rehearsal, free to um, be more confident, more spacious, more generous, more open, more ready for what the world throws our way, um, whether it be um, difficult moments or really joyous moments. Um, I, uh, I love Richard and I'm and, um, so excited to have him as part of the quartet family. Teaching is a huge part of my life. Uh, I love teaching. Um, the quartet is based at the University of Colorado in Boulder, where we lead a string quartet program, a graduate string quartet program. 
Um, at the moment, we have the wonderful Ivalis Quartet working with us, um, and they're continuing in the program next year. I also serve on violin faculty. Um, I keep a, a small but mighty violin studio of six or seven students. Um, and yeah, this year has been hard for all the reasons why we all know intimately. Um, it's been hard to focus. It's been hard to know how to respond to world events, um, in our case, both locally and, and um, uh, globally. Um, I think it's been, uh, for me, more about um, the kinds of conversations that we have in the studio, uh, making sure that everyone feels like it's a home, a place where they belong, a place where they can learn alongside and with people they trust. Um, I think it's a, a place where we can celebrate our diverse interests and talk about how to generate more curiosity and how to salivate about your dreams and be idealistic in beautiful ways. Um, I think it's uh, a, a important to for students to understand that they can um, they can disagree and um, still have a shared space for um, questions and and vulnerability because um, right now is a time where uh, learning and growing can't take place without that kind of openness Yes, in fact, we do have some plans for some new recordings. Um, this past November, uh, we recorded a disc for Hyperion, um, which had um, the Fanny Hensel string quartet on it, a uh, favorite of mine. I uh, love, love that piece. Um, uh, which will also, that disc will also have Felix Mendelssohn's Opus 13 and Opus 80. Um, so we recorded that in November and look forward to that release coming up. Uh, we're also recording a Haydn disc um, later this month, and um, uh, in early next year, we're looking forward to um, recording the Dittieu uh, alongside the Ravel and um, a new piece by Stephen Huff that we're very excited about. <laughs> What am I reading right now? Um, I just finished reading um, The Book of Tea, uh, which um, describes many things, um, but describes different aspects of uh, the Japanese tea ceremony and um, uh, all the things that that represents or can represent. Um, and uh, also talks quite a bit about art and art appreciation. Um, and how that can connect to a broader sense of, of spirituality. Hobbies or skills since COVID? Um, well, I'm not sure I want to admit this um, publicly, but here we go. <laughs> uh, I've been practicing a little bit of Baroque violin, which I'm not very good at, but I really love doing it. Um, <laughs> and I've um, been doing a lot of cooking. I've always loved cooking and been, um, I think, especially recently, been really enjoying the idea of cooking with fewer ingredients, but with more nutrition. So that's been really fun and tasty too. <laughs> 